Brent I wanted to do this video to go a very common question that we get at Top Velocity, and that is why don't we use a lot of long toss or weighted balls or plyo throws in our program? And why don't we emphasize arm strength, arm speed? These are very, very common questions and very important questions to understand why we don't do what 90% of baseball does. And it also has a lot to do with why we have a lot more success and less injury than most of baseball does. And I wanna teach you that, I wanna teach you this because at the end of the day, it's a perspective here. Baseball has a poor understanding of how the throwing mechanism works and they wind up injuring and destroying arms more than they improve and enhance them. So let's understand this through the science, not just through theory or what I'm making up, let's look at the science to truly understand it. So this is a study by ASMI, American Sports Medicine Institute, on the biomechanics of long toss, pitching versus long toss. And they put, they had college pitchers throw at different distances. And what they found was that mechanics changed as distances increased. Actually, mechanics changed away from the mechanics that they used on the mound. For example, the forward trunk tilts decreased. Uh, the elbow extension velocities increased. And because of that, the torques went up on the arm. If we go over to the modus sleeve study on long toss, looking at all levels of the game, little league, high school, college, pro, they found that with all pitchers, about 130 feet was maximum torques on the arm. The pro pitchers were able to get closer to 200. So here's the problem between these two studies. Long toss changes your mechanics away from good pitching mechanics. So you develop mechanics as distances increase that aren't considered good, healthy pitching mechanics on the mound. And because of that, it starts to put excessive maximum stress on your arm. Obviously, if the more talented you are, like the pro level, you can prolong or push those torques farther back with distance due to obviously your better use of your mechanics. So the reason we don't use it is because we're teaching, you're in long toss, extreme long toss, you're teaching mechanics that aren't good mechanics on the mound. And because of that, it's putting more stress on the arm. So that's a negative, right? So think about it. A lot of people are like, well, throwing long toss. I, I knew a guy who threw long toss and he said that's why he, he increased his velocity. Or I remember when I threw long toss when I was 15 and I increased velocity. Well, throwing in general will have an effect on velocity. But also, too, you got to understand that's called what we, what we call an anecdotal evidence, which means that's based on a personal account that more than likely isn't scientific or scientifically proven. So your association with your velocity linking to your long toss is probably not a strong correlation. That's why we use science and we use data that uses big sample sizes like here. They used 627,000 pitchers to do this study to develop this data as opposed to just one person or a few people. So it gives us a more accurate understanding of what's happening and it actually gives us a stronger correlation to what is really influencing it. So be careful when you use anecdotal evidence, evidence that isn't really scientific, that's just based on one or two cases, and it's based on what you perceive. Because at the end of the day, how many people throw long toss? If I'm in a room and I say, a baseball player is to say, hold up your hand if you throw long toss. I'm pretty sure about 90% are gonna hold up their hand. And then I'm gonna say, okay, how, hold up your hand. How many people in the room have gained 20 miles an hour or it throws 95 on long toss, you're gonna have maybe 1% of the room hold up their hands. So how effective is this form of training if everyone's doing it, but only a few people are having success, it probably doesn't have that much of a strong correlation to the success. You also hear guys say, well, they say if you can throw 300 feet on a line, you can throw 90 miles an hour. Well, that's probably true. But the problem is how do you develop throwing 300 feet on a line? Just like how do you develop throwing 90? So you're gonna say just throwing and trying to throw 300 feet is gonna be a better approach to throwing 90 than just getting on the mound and trying to throw 90. It's pretty much the same thing. 
That's why 90% of the people, 100% of the people throwing long toss, only a small sliver are having success because it's really unrelated to the long toss. But on top of that, we find out that it's not really a good form of training because it changes mechanics away from good pitching mechanics. And because of that, it puts more stress on your arm. Let's look at weighted balls. Weighted balls, now that we've seen the science, are finding that when we throw a heavier ball, it, all it does is, is increases external rotation. All it does is our external rotation range will, in, in, within the throwing session, will increase up to almost 10 degrees. It doesn't improve arm speed. It doesn't improve arm strength. All it does is allow your arm to lay back more. Well, we hear, well, isn't lay back good, coach? Isn't it good to have more lay back? Well, what it does biomechanically is the more your arm lays back, the more it allows your trunk to go forward, which your trunk carries all this momentum and energy that'll push into the ball. So yes, it can help your velocity, but it's doing it by forcing your arm to lay back longer to allow more energy in your trunk to go forward. The problem is the mechanism that is allowing the arm to lay back more, external and rotate more, they believe is the arm deteriorating and ripping apart. It's not like they don't believe the arm is stretching in that short amount of time. Because typically in one throwing session of weighted ball, your arm gained 10 degrees of external rotation. Muscles and tendons don't stretch that quickly. More than likely, you're destroying your shoulder. It's literally the tissue is ripping apart. So to get the benefits of velocity from a weighted ball, which is really you having more laid back so your trunk can go more forward, as opposed to just teaching you how to get your trunk to go more forward or more power through your trunk, you're using external rotation range in a short amount of time, which is destroying your arm to get the component of more forward trunk tilt. It's not a good approach to velocity and it's why weighted balls are riddled with injury because you're trying to get that one component, that more forward trunk energy by trashing the arm to get there. Not a good approach to do that. This one study showed among youth pitchers an increase in ball weight correlated with greater medial elbow torque which de and decreased pitch velocity and decreased arm speed. So obviously when you throw away the ball, it slows your, your velocity down and throws your arms, slows your arm speed down, but it, most importantly, it's putting more torque into your elbow. So it's causing more stress. Now we're knowing it's not only causing more breakdown in the shoulder, it's also causing more stress in the elbow. We're not seeing the true benefits. You know, a lot of people say when I throw away the ball, a heavier ball, and I throw a lighter ball, my arm goes faster. But is that what we want? Do we want our arms to go faster? Remember that. Keep that in the back of your head. But over time, it doesn't show meaning when we do weighted balls over time, it doesn't show our arm speeds improve. It just once again shows the layback increased. So here's the thing. If you're going to put a ball in your hand to increase your arm speed because it feels lighter, you know, the heavier ball feels lighter than the five ounce ball that you throw, the problem is you got to understand we saw it put stress in the elbow. We saw it put stress on the shoulder. If you're a pitcher, in this case, who has tight hips, which tight hips, specifically hip extension, causes more arm drag and arm push, poor hip extension. Now you put a weighted ball on that, which that's a high risk arm movement that can cause injury with the tight hips causing more arm drag, arm push. Now you put a weighted ball on that poor arm path or those bad mechanics, that's where it becomes a nightmare. That's where weighted balls really start to have major problems. That's why in the Reynolds study, out of 30 pitchers that were in the study, uh, three of them had to have major surgery out of a six weeks of training with a weighted ball approach. So you gotta understand, you're, you're putting your arm, you're jeopardizing the health of your arm to try to get a bump in velocity when you should be addressing things like improving your hip mobility which tons of studies show allow the arm to more efficiently go through a healthy arm path. Also here, got pitchers that have more hip range of motion typically have more scapular range of motion. 
So you should be working on your hips as much as your arms, right? A lot of guys say, well, why don't you, why do you warm up with ply or don't warm up with plyo balls? Well, because that's just addressing the arm. When we warm up, we warm up with the total body, a dynamic warm up. We warm the hips up, we stretch the hips, we warm the trunk up, and then very little with the arm because the studies are showing the better we correct the hip mobility and the hip integrity and the timing of the trunk to, uh, or the hip to trunk movements, then it frees up the arm to have less stress and be more prepared for throwing. Another study here showing poor range of motion in the hips pitching causes more injury in the arms. Also here, let's go back to the layback, right? It says, you know, the weighted balls give you more layback that allows your trunk to go forward. Well, this study showed excessive laxity may increase injury probability due to improper motion with the joint and increased forces with certain tissue. If you start messing with your range of motion and forcing more of it in your shoulder, it can lead to injury because the shoulder might not be now strong enough to protect itself and it alters your mechanics, can create more of that arm drag and now you have more stress biomechanically on the arm. And we know torques. So when we see torques and we read torques on the elbow, we know that's not good because that means more injury. The group that had more torque in the elbow were the more injured group, okay? So how do we do this? How do we do this without improving velocity, without destroying the arm? And it's the, it's the different perspective here. It's not in the arm. It's in the kinetic chain. It's in the body. For example, this study found that pro pitchers out of high school or youth, high school and college, pro pitchers put less stress on their arm based on body weight, less internal rotation torque. We saw torque increases injury, less internal rotation torque than any other level, right? Sorry, less internal rotation torque. Sorry, getting a nice little error here. Let me get this other way. Okay, so less internal rotation torque than any other level. So pro pitchers are not sitting here building these like iron scaps, these strong upper bodies, so they can handle more stress to throw harder. They're doing the opposite, guys. They're actually learning to put less stress on their arm, less torque on their arm than all the other levels. That's how they're surviving. That's how they're playing at the high level, throwing harder than all the other levels and throwing more often than all the other levels. Not because they're stronger, which they probably are, but more because they are reducing stress to the arm. And how does that happen? This study says they're learning to delay the trunk more, which means they're learning to sequence the kinetic chain better. All right, so it's not about arm strength and it's not about arm speed. Here's a study looking at youth, high school, college, and professional pitchers. College pitchers, on average, their internal rotation velocity was 7,400 degrees per second. Their ball velocity was 35 meters per second. That's around 85 miles an hour. They, when they went to the professional level, the arm speed went down from 74 to 7,200 degrees per second, but the ball speed went up 37 meters per second. That's around 90 miles an hour. So they're gaining velocity while reducing arm speed. Listen to that. They're gaining velocity while reducing arm speed. So how, so ultimately if we're looking at these two studies here, if you want to go from the college to the professional level, from college to the professional level, based on this data, you need to learn to reduce your arm speed, which ultimately will help you reduce your arm torques. If you can do that and throw harder, you're a professional pitcher. And that's not gonna happen by doing max distance long toss, heavy weighted ball throwing, which is doing the opposite, right? Now, here's an important thing. A lot of coaches say, well, how do we, you know, to, if, if it is arm strength, right? If they believe in arm strength, they say, well, how do we develop arm strength? You got to throw more. You got it. That's why they want you to throw a long toss. That's why they want you to throw more consistently, throw more often, throw every day. Here's the problem. This study showed it took four days after pitching to get the strength back in the rotator cuff took four days for the strength in the rotator cuff to come back after pitching. So throwing is breaking the arm down. 
but breaking it down dramatically to where it takes four days for it to recover. And not only that, we can see the more we throw statistically, the more prone to injury we are. For example, here's all these studies over here. They said that if you pitch fatigue, so for example, you threw and it took you four days for your arm strength to come back. Say you threw on day three or day two, still fatigued. You're 36 more times uh, likely to have injury. If you pay, pitch more than eight months out of the year, you're five times more likely to have injury. If you throw more than 80 pitches a game, you're almost four times more likely to have injury. If you throw more than 85 miles an hour, you're almost three times more likely to have injury. If you throw more 100 in, innings in a year, 3.5 times more likely to have injury. If you play pitcher and catcher, you're 2.7 times more likely to have injury. If you participate, participate in a showcase, eight times more likely to have injury. If you participate in concurrent leagues, two leagues at once, 5.3 times more likely to have injury. If you participate in travel ball, almost five times more likely to have injury. So throwing is leading to injury. Throwing pitching takes a long time to recover, which makes you more susceptible to injury, right? So is throwing for arm strength the way to go? This study would say, be careful. It's a balance here, right? This study found that strength ratios, the strength of internal to external rotation strength of the shoulder, which protects the shoulder, decreases when torques go up. This study says the more torque you put internally to throw a ball, the weaker your ratio becomes, which means your strength of your internal rotators will go up, but your external rotators will weaken the more you increase your torques. So this is getting even crazier, right? You're, you're trying to increase your arm strength or your arm speed. You're trying to throw more often to improve your arm strength. Throwing more often is causing more breakdown, more uh, higher rate of injury. Also, throwing and trying to increase your arm speeds with your arm is forcing your external rotation strength to weaken faster because the person who used more internal rotation torques had less external rotation strength. Why is that happening? Because the arm, like the humerus here, it's it, like if you're trying to spin it forward and it has internal rotators and external rotators, like two rubber bands holding it, if I'm going to accelerate with my internal rotators, I'm going to have to take my foot off the brake, which is the external rotators. I'm gonna have to take it off to allow it to spin faster. That's why they believe this is happening. That's why they believe if you put more internal rotation torque in your arm, you're having to cause more external rotation weakness. Now that's that's a problem because if you are your arm is weakening and breaking down and you're coming into season with a weaker shoulder because you threw a lot coming in and you try to increase your arm speed so those external rotations are now have gotten considerably weak. If you come into season like that studies show, you're more prone to injury. The weaker shoulder, whoever comes in with the weaker shoulder, he's the one more prone to injury. So if you're throwing a lot, if you're throwing max distance, if you're working on arm speed and you're going into your season with a weaker shoulder, you are highly more, more prone to injury. And then let's go even farther into this. If it's all about arm strength, arm speed, then why do non-pitchers, we're looking at baseball pitchers and non-pitchers, why do non-pitchers, which is right here the white, why do they have more shoulder strength ratios on the better strength ratios on the dominant arm than pitchers? And this is external to internal. So the external to internal rotation strength of a non-pitcher on the dominant arm, the throwing arm, is greater than pitchers. Why is that happening? Why are non-pitchers developing more internal to external rotation strength in their throwing arms than, than the pitchers? And why do the pitchers on the other side have more internal external rotation strength than the non-pitchers. So why do the pitchers are on the non-throwing arm, their non-throwing pitching arm, why do they have more internal external rotation strength than the non-pitchers, but on the throwing arm, they have less internal external rotation strength? You know why? Because they're doing arm care obsessively, but it's only strengthening the non-throwing arm. It's not successfully strengthening the throwing arm. That is eye-opening. So all this excessive upper body 
arm speed, arm strength, uh, arm care programs, they're not working because the mechanism to increase your velocity is wrong. You're using the wrong mechanism. And this study showed it too, that the external rotation strength is getting weaker as the internal rotation, internal rotation strength is getting stronger in pitchers. So if a coach ever says to you, or ask your coach, you ask him the question, does throwing strengthen your arm? Because the answer is yes and no. Yes, it increases and it strengthens internal rotations, but it, it decreases external rotation strength. That is the problem because that's the braking system. The acceleration system is getting better. The braking system is getting worse. So if someone asks me, does throwing strength in my arm? I say no. It does not strengthen my arm because I'll never be healthy if I say yes. Okay. This is also looking at compression forces. So how do we do this better? If, if arm speed and, and throwing more often to develop arm strength is actually doing the opposite, it's weakening our arms faster and destroying our arms quicker. At the end of the day, who cares about velocity if we can't stay healthy? What is the answer? It is the kinetic chain. We already saw pro pitchers put less torques on their arm. Why? Because they delay the trunks. Now it's showing us those who put less stress on their arm, which is the result of less compressive forces, basically you're squeezing and pulling, it's because there's more energy in the lower half. It may be possible to decrease peak leaner humor compression forces by optimizing movements of the lower body while pitching. So the better the stride length improves, the better the pelvis uh, tilts improve, the better, the earlier the pelvis velocities, the compression, the stresses come off the arm. We also have Kibler and Chandler. They calculated that a 20% decrease in kinetic energy that's coming up from the ground, through the hips, through the trunk, to the arm, a 20% decrease requires a 34% increase in the rotational velocity of the shoulder just to put the same force to the ball. So the value of energy you can create in the ground and through your kinetic chain is almost worth twice of what you can try to create in your arm. So think about it that way. This movement is your arm speed movement. This movement is your kinetic chain or your energy flow movement. That one is so much more valuable to pitching. If you increase velocity through the kinetic chain where you don't have to so much rely on your arm speed, arm strength, you're not only gonna increase your velocity, but you're gonna get healthier in the process. Once again, we don't follow the conventional wisdom because the conventional wisdom is backwards. It's training everyone to deteriorate their arms while trying to improve their performance. It doesn't work that way. It only leads to injury, all right? So here's movements that typically lead to injury. Avoid cocking the arm too high. Avoid pushing the elbow forward. Avoid extending your arm too early. Why does all that happen? Because you're obsessed with using your arm. If there's another study that shows, I don't, I don't have that one here, that the trunk, the arm path is, pre, is a predicated or determined by the trunk movements. If the trunk goes this way, the arm goes that way. If the trunk goes this way, the arm goes that way. The trunk goes this way, the arm goes that way. The trunk is the driving the arm path movements. So all these bad arm path movements are like towel drills and plyo balls. They're movements where you're just casting with the arm. You're not actually using the kinetic chain. That's why we don't use drills that teach bad movements, which you're gonna find. Long toss teaches bad mechanics. Weighted balls, because you're pushing, then casting the arm, can create bad mechanics. Like, like the plyo throws, they can create bad mechanics. All right? And then looking here, basically those who improperly sequence the kinetic chain, they improperly use the trunk to torso movements and timing, they're more susceptible to injury. Pitchers who had earlier trunk uh, rotation at front foot, if they were pulling their glove earlier at front foot, they had more stress, more torques on the arm. So we can really see here that the keys to enhancing velocity while reducing stress so you can actually survive and thrive in the game is avoiding this conventional wisdom. It's why we don't use long toss. It's why we don't use weighted balls, plyo throws. It's why we don't use these upper body arm speed, arm strength 
and, and, and maximum amount of throwing with throwing distance to develop pitchers because it's the it's doing it upside down and that's why it's accelerating the injury uh, problem and that's why it's not as successful all right so look at the studies guys we're, we're not using anecdotal evidence we're not going well i saw my buddy do it well this guy did it well that guy uses it that's anecdotal all of that could be completely misinterpreted we use science which is comes from peer-reviewed medical institutions that have educators that make sure the errors are as small as possible and that we're making the best ed most educated guesses as we can in large sample sizes this is the only way to do this game this is a highly complex skill it's the fastest human movement ever recorded in a laboratory and it doesn't work when the arm is a generator of velocity it only truly works all the way up to the big league level when you're mainly using the body through the whole kinetic chain to develop energy and you're putting very little stress very little work very little effort in the arm to throw hard or move the ball right it, it at the end of the day i mean as far as move the ball when it comes to when you can make the arm a regulator now it can do those things better like pitch location pitch command pitch movement those are the things now it has a better opportunity to do because you're not sitting there cranking on those internal rotators to build arm speed. And you're not using drills that just constantly emphasize the arm speed, arm movements, the casting of the arm, the overemphasis of the arm. You're actually using drills that emphasize the mobility integrity of the hips that we saw highly correlate to the arm health that emphasize the timing and sequencing of the kinetic chain, which highly emphasize arm health and arm velocity. And it's the only way, and it's how we do it here at Top Velocity. It's why you see completely different training. It's why it's a lot harder. And it's why we get such better results than all those other arm-focused conventional wisdom approaches out there. So I know this is a lot of information. Take the time to go through these studies and really look at them. They're all in my social media as well individually, but pause the videos, read through them. They're really, really powerful. It'll change your perspective. You'll never see the game, the pitching movement the same again, and therefore you can really move forward in your career, stay healthy and throw hard and be effective. So I hope that helps you. If you have any questions, man, just reach out to me.